What is a centralized crypto exchange? What is a decentralized crypto exchange? If you're a beginner in the crypto world, this is the video for you. So stick around and let me explain what you should use, what you should be careful of, and what is the best option for anyone entering the crypto world for the first time or even for more experienced people out there. So if you enjoyed the video, as always, subscribe to the channel and let's just get straight into it where a centralized crypto exchange or CEX is a crypto exchange that operates with a intermediary. So it's sort of like a bank in the crypto world, if you could call it like that, because you have a central party that is connecting the buyer and the seller with every single transaction, making a system that basically just works all the time and automatically using a software. Now, this will sound dangerously close to what a decentralized exchange actually is and its automated market maker technology, but there are a few key differences which I will discuss later on in today's video. Now, centralized exchanges still remain the world's most widely used method to buy and sell cryptocurrencies, and they function three functions, or they use, they do three functions, right? Crypto trading platform or connecting buyers and sellers, account services where you can account, you know, fund your account or withdrawal and customer support services as a third. Now, there is a few differences between CEXs and DEXs, but let's just start off with the ease of access to centralized exchanges themselves, because all you need is an internet connection to discover and transact with crypto assets. It is usually or not usually constantly, consistently, every single time it's owned and operated by a private company and requires users to sign up and open an account in order to participate. And uh, it all works on the basis of an order book, right? Which connects buyers and sellers. Now, some of the examples of centralized exchanges out there are Binance, Coinbase, Bybit, Gemini, Kraken, and KuCoin. And uh, you know, the Baby Pips team right here, this website that I'm discussing, it's actually really, really good for learning, but everything when it comes to cryptocurrencies, everything when it comes to trading, Forex, technical analysis, fundamentals, Highly recommend it and check it down in the description below if you want to learn more. But uh, in general, you know, this software that matches buyers and sellers uh, basically just does everything completely automatically. So it seems like you're actually transacting with the exchange. But what you're doing is you're placing a buy order and somebody who's selling is simply matched to you and you you know, buy from the seller. And this is called order matching, right? Buyers and sellers always transact with each other and the exchange itself just provides a place for people who want to buy crypto and for people who want to sell their crypto. So if a buyer wants to buy Bitcoin at $20,000 and a seller wants to sell Bitcoin at $20,000, the exchange matches the orders of these two people and the transaction goes to through and the exchange takes a small percentage as a trading fee. Now, what if somebody wanted to, you know, buy Bitcoin at a lower price than it's at, right? Would somebody be willing to sell at a lower price? Well, no, you know, it doesn't make sense for that to happen. And the same goes for, you know, if somebody would want to buy Bitcoin for a higher price than it is, then, you know, they can set an order for it. And then if there's some uh, seller out there who wants to take advantage of it, I mean, I guess they can, right? They can simply just sell Bitcoin for 21K if this guy wants to buy for 21K. But once again, this is never gonna happen because if there's sufficient liquidity in the exchange, there will be no reason for this guy to pay $1,000 extra to buy Bitcoin because he's gonna be able to buy it at the price of $20,000. So this is kind of a, a pretty, pretty cool feature of centralized exchanges. And it's the fact that everything is very, very logical, right? Nobody is gonna go against the market. And this is why we have a spot price created or the market price where you know, you see exactly what the price is in the entire market, which is what you can see if you literally Google Bitcoin price online. And the second feature of centralized exchanges are clearing counterparty, right? So all of these matched orders appear to be against the exchange itself rather than between the users directly, which provides anonymity and uh, also just makes it seem like you're transacting with, you know, your computer. And it just makes everything very simple, right? But the CEX on the inside handles the entire process of the transaction, ensures that all of the obligations are met between the buyer and seller and the transaction actually Complete. So it's never going to happen that you pay $20,000 for Bitcoin and you never receive your Bitcoin. If that happens, you contact customer support. And if it's a good exchange, such as, you know, Binance, which is the only exchange that I can vouch for at this point, 
seeing as what has been happening recently well they're gonna you know restore your bitcoin and see what went wrong but there's a very small chance of this happening i'm just saying if it does happen well you gotta contact customer support you gotta go through with it and if it uh you know happens that you don't get your funds back then you should probably switch your exchange which leads me to my next point your exchange is actually your custodian right so they keep your money right whether you deposited fiat or crypto once it's deposited it is under the custody of the exchange and you're now trusting this exchange to keep your funds secure and uh, it's very important to choose a good exchange because you know so you don't get caught up in all of this ftx like stuff that happened very recently so if you want to learn more about how crypto exchanges work you can head on over to baby pips i'm literally going to leave the link down below and you're going to find it very useful but uh, in general one of the key differences between centralized exchanges and decentralized exchanges is that decentralized exchanges don't have the custodian right you are your own custodian and your money is always in your wallet until you get you know a different type of cryptocurrency in there so let me clarify right a decentralized exchange now is a peer-to-peer -peer marketplace where transactions occur directly between crypto traders right it's completely decentralized and a few examples are uniswap and sushi swap there is a huge range of financial services that are available to you as a dex user directly from a compatible crypto wallet and uniswap is one of the largest ones out there with a 1.2 trillion dollar trading volume 122 million all-time trades a lot of different integrations and basically it started off with an open source code so we did see a lot of other decentralized exchanges uh, showing up such as pancake swap sushi swap that are all operating on uniswap's original code in the first quarter of 2021 217 billion in, trans in transactions flowed through decentralized exchanges absolutely huge but when you compare it to binance for example which has a 20 billion dollar volume per day it's nothing it's still quite minuscule because it's a lot more difficult to use decentralized exchanges than it is to use centralized ones but i guess over time the market will adapt people will learn and decentralized exchanges will be the main source of trading cryptocurrencies so one thing you should know is that decentralized exchanges don't really allow you to change between fiat and crypto so if you want to use a dex you're going to use a cex first to get your money from fiat into crypto and then you can send your crypto on a decentralized exchange and basically swap it to another cryptocurrency also on a decentralized exchange you're not able to use these advanced moves such as margin trading or setting limit orders but in any case you know if you are uh, you know trying to uh, you know use this order book thing you're you're going to be on the set on the centralized exchange right and this is what nasdaq uh, you know does that's what the s p 500 does all of these uh, stock exchanges are using the same exact order book thing so why is a decentralized exchange different than a centralized exchange when it comes to these order books well what the decentralized exchanges actually do is the same pretty much thing, but using a set of smart contracts. They use liquidity pools to match currencies with each other algorithmically. And this is actually a lot better explained in another article. So I'm just going to move on right now and tell you that these DEX transactions are settled directly on the blockchain rather than in the internal database of a centralized exchange. And it's also really good that they're open source because as you can see, everybody out there copied Uniswap. So the potential benefits of using a decentralized exchange is, first of all, DEXs offer a virtually limitless range of tokens from the well-known to the weird and totally random. Definitely beware and be careful when purchasing stuff over the decentralized exchange because there's a lot of pumps and dumps out there and I don't want you guys... Uh, you know stupidly losing your money because you didn't do your own due diligence so do your research before purchasing anything on a decentralized exchange know the value of a project read the white paper follow the team and only then get into it but you know at the same time even though there's a lot of risk with all of these bad uh, projects out there there also is a huge potential for re reward because you know all of the times 10 times 100 times a thousand increases came from you know these smaller coins right i just wanted to say something that's not allowed on youtube but in any case hacking risks can also be reduced because all of the funds on a dex trade are stored directly on the trader's own wallets so it directly reduces counterparty risk which is the likelihood that one of the involved parties including the centralized exchange in that example could default right and defaulting means that they have no more money left over to pay you out now Third of all, another benefit is anonymity. So there's no personal information required. All you need is your wallet to connect. And fourth of all, there is a lot of utility for decentralized exchanges in the developing world because it's, uh, you know, allowing a lot of people to have access to financial 
instruments that they wouldn't usually have in their countries well all you need is you know an internet connection and uh you know maybe a smartphone or a computer right so it's pretty much the same as centralized exchanges there is a few downside as well for example you got to be very cautious because it's possible to make an unfixable error like sending coins to the wrong wallet so this is stuff that you just need to pay attention to you got to get the address exactly the right address you got to send over the right network you got to swap as per the instructions so my advice there is literally to do your own research or head on over to baby pips and learn a little bit more about this whole situation smart contract vul vulnerability also well in case that you know one of these decentralized exchanges that you're using is not too well known it's not too well used they may actually not have a good smart contract and they may lose your funds in some way shape or form so you should also stick to the largest decentralized exchanges out there such as uniswap right or you know uh, pancake swap if you want to swap on the binance smart chain rather than on ethereum which could be a lot more lucrative when it comes to you know lowering your ethereum gas fees and lastly a lot of scams and schemes out there so just be careful it's very simple to interact with the dex all you need is a wallet you can check out uniswap they have a lot of different stuff over here so you can learn about them as well and this is how it actually looks so if i connect my wallet right now and i want to swap ethereum to another token out there for example you know ash i literally just type i want to swap to ethereum into ash and it's going to connect me with another person who uh, or sorry with the liquidity pool that has uh, sufficient liquidity to pay me out my number of ash as soon as i press the connect wallet button and press the swap button after that and that's pretty much it if you want to join a liquidity pool well you can do so as well by connecting a wallet you can provide liquidity and you get a certain percentage from all of the transactions that go on with your uh you know uh, basically they incentivize you with a percentage that you get on a yearly basis for holding your money inside of the liquidity pool and lastly this is a one inch right it's also a decentralized exchange but this article is uh, pretty interesting because it talks about the major difference of uh, both of these platforms and it says that it is custody right unlike centralized exchanges no central authority or third party is involved in the operation of a dex and as a result a user retains full control of their funds stored or traded on dexes which offer a higher degree of security than centralized exchanges so you're not leaving your money with anyone else it's literally always in your wallet now another major difference is that you know off-chain order books are actually used to match buyers and sellers on a centralized exchange but what happens on a decentralized exchange is called a automated market maker or amm model now this amm model simply put consists of a liquidity pool that holds two tokens or a pair of tokens when a buyer places a trade the algorithm will appropriately provide a price for this token right when a seller comes along as well it will do exactly the same thing based on the ratio of these tokens adjusting the price with the goal to restore balance in the entire pool which basically renders the transaction to go through and this amm model removes any third party risk and allows traders to maintain custody of their own funds very very simply so that's pretty much it for today's video i just wanted to give you a little rundown of the news that's going to be coming out next week we got gdp news from great britain uh governor of canada is speaking as well on uh monday december 12th december 13th we have a uh, claimant count change this is not too large news um we have bailey speaking from gdp uh gbp or or the uk so it's going to be some news that will rock the pound we have cpi coming out from the us huge news coming out on tuesday uh ad also a bit of news and why i'm telling you this is because it's all going to rock the market right it's all going to have an impact because everybody always keeps talking about interest rates and cpi is uh something very important to monitor inflation going on and if you know what the inflation is then you're going to know what the next move for rate hikes is going to be fomc is coming out on wednesday absolutely huge uh news as well um this next week is going to be really big in the trading world so i'm going to be sure to update you with everything going on with uh, you know chart work and all of this other stuff so you can potentially uh, make some profits on the market as well so that's it for today's video hope you guys enjoyed it make sure to drop a like subscribe to the channel comment down below with your favorite thoughts and check out the satoshi socials below if you enjoyed it drop a like once again and i'm not a financial advisor and you should do your own due diligence before investing into anything in the blockchain crypto or nft world so thanks for watching and i'll see you all in the next video